What's good, fam? It's your bro Kwame B here. On this episode, we're here at the Disney World Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival 2024, and we're going to eat everything. 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 Welcome to Kwame B, reviewing the food review show where I always give you the real deal on all the food that I eat. I am unbought and I pay for everything that I eat. So all of my reviews are based on my personal preferences and my experiences as a restaurateur. Let's get reviewing. Yippee! We're here on our first stop at the Disney World Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival 2024 at the Honey Bistro. It's hosted by the National Honey Board. And we are here, we got everything on the menu. We've got their honey glazed cauliflower dish. We've also have their chicken and waffles and we've got the honey peach cobbler freeze. And then a dish that's technically on their menu but you have to get from a different stall, which is this liquid nitrogen honey cheesecake. So I'm very interested in trying all of these. This is our first stop. Let's get into it. Honey glazed cauliflower, we got honey roasted carrot puree, wild rice pilaf, spring vegetables, honey blistered grapes and sunflower brittle. Very interesting. I'm gonna to try to get one cohesive bite of everything in there. This is actually a really strong way to start off. This dish is really good. It's sweet, it's savory, it's got some saltiness in there. Everything kind of comes together really well. It's a medley of different things and there's different textures. You get this crunch, you get some softness in there, you get a little, the, the blistering, the grape, that gives you this burst and punch of sweetness. I really like that, the honey glazed cauliflower, that's really good. All right, now let's move on to the chicken and waffle. So we got crispy chicken, a honey sweet cornbread waffle, whipped honey butter, spicy honey on here. Let's take that to the side. Now I'll tell you already, again, I own a chicken restaurant, two chicken restaurants, but one that specializes in fried chicken. This chicken, way over breaded, caked on. Um, it probably was frozen and fried from there. I doubt it was freshly breaded because, and if it was, it was sitting for a really long time to where all like the gluten just kind of built up too much. It was overworked. And so you get really thick breading like this where you can kind of hit it, I can feel it, and it's kind of mushy. It's not like crunchy like you would want to. It doesn't have any good airiness in it. It's just thick and dense. And I can tell that just by looking at it. But we're gonna give it a fair shot, cut into it anyway, and see exactly where we get. Because that doesn't mean the chicken doesn't taste good. It just means texturally it's not gonna be the best that it could be. Because that happens at my restaurant. Anytime I know when someone's doing something the improper way is when I can see the breading on the chicken. And if it looks similar to this or anywhere close to this, I know that we were not breading properly. And then we fix it, we throw it out and fix it. But anyway, so the chicken we're gonna actually see is, looks like, looks to be juicy. All right, here's the pros, the sweetness and the spiciness, right, and you get some saltiness from the breading on the chicken, that goes really good. There's this deep savoriness within the cornbread waffle. And it looks like they got some jalapeno in the cornbread waffle as well as some corn. That, it gives it this depth of flavor that I actually quite like. Again, I'm a big cornbread guy, I like southern food, that's a big thing for me. I think that all comes together really well. The cons here are that this breading on the chicken is absolutely terrible. It is so thick, so dense. It's just like, it, it would be better if it almost wasn't there. Like if they just used like fried chicken skin and had like the nice chicken breast and had that as a, maybe a different type of contrast, that would be really, really good. But this breading, again, it's pre-breaded. It's breaded way too early and then dropped in the fryer. And like, again, they cooked the chicken well, but not overcooked, a little bit stringy, but still nice and juicy, still a good bite. Doesn't pull apart that hard in your mouth. So like it's a nice, juicy, succinct bite. However, that breading is an absolute massive fail but it doesn't take away so much that I would say that this isn't good and inedible. It just isn't nearly as good as it could be. So I wanna round this out on this menu. On the, what's technically on this menu is the honey peach cobbler freeze. It's got some streusel on top. Let's get reviewing. Well, this is the non-alcoholic version. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty good. Like it's nice and sweet, it's not overly sweet. It's got that cinnamon in there, the streusel, where usually a topping like that in a kind of a milk-based drink would be a little weird to me or it would get soggy over time, but it's got a little bit of a crunch to it, so you still get that little contrast in there when you wanna bite around to it, but not so much so that it's like makes it grainy. So it's still a nice smooth drink. The peach flavor is there. A little more subtle than you might expect, but not in a bad way at all. I think it's nice and balanced. And this is a really good drink. This is the non-alcoholic version. They have an alcoholic version, although I just off the top of my head would probably prefer it like this unless they mix the alcohol in it really well. But I think they use a blueberry vodka. It said for the alcoholic one, that could be good if that's what you're into. But I think this is a well-balanced drink. Nice to cool you off, especially as you're walking around here and the hot sun is out. I really like this actually. We'll make our decision in the end if we include this as a part of this part or not. We can always get another one, but this is the liquid nitro honey mascarpone cheesecake. We got fresh honey here, granulated honey, and honey mead blueberry compote. This is the special dessert presented by the National Honey Board. 
Let's see, they got that blueberry compote on there. Let's get it with the mascarpone cheesecake. I like it. Not gonna lie, that's actually a really nice dessert. It's nice and sweet, it's balanced, so it's not overly sweet. You would think with the cheesecake, the honey, the blueberry compote that you would just get this overly sweet bite, but it actually comes together really nicely, right? The mascarpone cheese has, has a nice, like, rich fat and that savory aspect to it, so it kind of melts it down so they didn't make the cheesecake too sweet. The honey on there is nice. Not loud. I want to say it's not loud. Like there's some honeys out there, depending on the type of honey you use, like you can really taste like the flower they use and it's really loud. This is like a really subtle, nice honey flavor. It just gives you that hint of honey. And then the blueberry compote, also not overpowering. It just comes together and the actual, the blueberries in there are not so reduced to where they, they're like blistered to where that you still have a bit of that bite to get that crunch. So it gives you some textural contrast, which is really nice and really helpful for this because everything else is really soft and kind of mush. So that gives you a little bit of a bite to it, but it just makes it all come together really nicely. It's really luscious, it's really rich, but delicious. I really like that dish a lot. It's time to give a rating, a review on the Honey Bistro, which is presented by the National Honey Board here at Disney World Epcot for the International Flower and Garden Festival 2024. My official review of the Honey Bistro is an A minus. Fix the breading on the chicken or change it out entirely and give me some type of different contrast and then you have a solid A. But everything here tasted quite good. Well done. Absolutely well done. This is a place you definitely want to go to. This is a great first stop and make it the last one too. We are here at our next stop here at the International Flower and Garden Festival at Disney World Epcot. We are at the refreshment port near Canada and we have got the signature dish that they had to offer which was plant-based buffalo chicken tender poutine. Here we got fresh tater tots that they pulled right out the fryer and put right in there. And then what is this that we got looking like here? Oh, blue cheese crumbles. I'm sure that's plant-based plant, oh, plant -based blue cheese crumbles. Very interesting. Let's get reviewing. I mean, it smells like buffalo and smells good. The plant-based chicken thing is not for me. All right, let's just get that cut and clear. Plant-based chicken tender is not for me. So what I will judge, the texture, terrible. Absolutely awful. However, the buffalo sauce is fine. It's a good quality buffalo sauce for what this is. The blue cheese crumble, the plant-based blue cheese crumble actually is interesting. It definitely has a clear blue cheese flavor. So for that, most people really probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Overall, the flavor profile plus the tater tots are nice and crispy. Makes it edible for sure. All right, now we'll move on to the drinks. We've got the mojito, the frozen mojito. It's got Boyd and Blair rum. It is very sweet and also very smooth. And I forgot, what, how much did we pay for that? $13, yikes. You can walk around and chew on the sugar cane stick after that, it's got some sweetness inside. A lot of people probably break their teeth on that, but I got really nice strong teeth, fortunately. Brush every day, folks, twice a day if you can. But it's cool, it's refreshing. It's just really expensive at $13 just for that. And then last but not least, maybe least, we'll see, is the Country Boy Brewing Orange Cream Hard Cider. And this was $12, but this is a tall cup, so it's Disney. Personally, I'm not a fan. It's smooth, however, when I look for a cider, I usually like ciders to be on the sweeter side. This is very, not that at all. This is slightly sweet, very subtly sweet. You definitely get that orange cream flavor in there, so they definitely hit the note on that, so that's done well. But besides that, it just doesn't have the flavor profile that I need, and especially with this dish, if I got it with the buffalo, plant-based buffalo chicken tender poutine, this is highly acidic, and like really like, you know, the, the spice in there, it's got a lot of that going on. I would want something to kind of help cool that down and then some sweetness to balance it out. So it's got acid, saltiness, and then I got subtle sweetness, which doesn't really pair together well in my opinion. Instead, opt for the mojito, which is a much better pairing for this because it is very sweet, helps to cut a lot of that down. Far better choice, absolutely. Overall, everything included, both drinks, plant-based chicken tender poutine. My overall review for the refreshment port near Canada is a D+. Again, flavor-wise, I think this is a fine dish. The texture I can't personally get behind for the plant-based buffalo chicken tenders, that's not good for me at all. And it's $10 for this. So at a $10 value, if you're a plant-based individual, if your diet's vegetarian, vegan, plant-based, etc., sure, why not? Get into it. 
right? Because it's something for you. But anybody else, do not waste the money or the time because that line was kind of long and it took a while to get this, so. All right, we're here at the Northern Bloom stall at Canada for the International Flower and Garden Festival 2024. We got all three of the food dishes, seared scallops with French green beans, marble potatoes, and bacon vinaigrette. We've got the beef tenderloin tips. We've got mushroom bordelaise sauce, whipped potatoes, and garden vegetables. And then we're gonna finish it off with their chocolate maple whiskey cake. Let's get into it, starting with these scallops. Here's the green beans. We got these marble potatoes. Let's just try and get one bite of everything. That bacon vinaigrette is on there. You can see the little bits of bacon in there if you look closely. First thing first, I gotta tell you, I'm impressed with how they cook those scallops. They're not absolutely perfectly cooked, but they're pretty good. Maybe a tad over. It's just a tad tending to that rubbery side that scallops get to. Scallops are either really well done or really rubbery or raw. And these are pretty darn well done. And they're nice, they're succulent. They're a little, that, that little sweet butteriness on the inside that you get from a well-cooked scallop. And that bacon vinaigrette does a nice job on top of it to provide some acidity to cut into that. And it, it's just got a little bit of texture in there from the little bacon crumbles in there that really helps to offset that. That's really good. The green beans had a nice crisp crunch to it. The potatoes there, uh, honestly, I feel like they could be cooked a little bit more. For me, they're a little bit too firm. and in desperate need of more salt. They need like a side of the bacon vinaigrette just for the potatoes. However, that's a pretty good dish overall. The scallops, beautiful. All right, now we're moving on to the beef tenderloin tips. Again, here we got mushroom bordelaise sauce, whipped potatoes, and garden vegetables. Let's see, these carrots look a little bit raw. That carrot tastes like it was just pulled out of the ground. That's crazy. It is very raw, very firm. Like, slightly cooked but not nearly enough for like what you would think a beef tenderloin this is like a beef stew to me right it's got the mashed potatoes the carrots the beef that should be a lot softer than what it is i know you want some contrast in there for texture but that's like i don't know shave it or something it's 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 too thick all right let's go with the mushroom bordelaise sauce on the whipped potatoes well seasoned the potatoes are creamy that's pretty good and then the actual beef tenderloin tip Beef tenderloin, you want to imagine it's nice and succulent, nice and tender, moist, juicy. This is on the overcooked and a little bit dried out on the inside side. Yeah, definitely trending dry on the inside. You need to eat it all together. Yep. Yeah, everything I just ate for that dish is much better on its own separately. Like that is all together, not, not really great separately. They taste okay, with the exception of the raw carrot. I mean, unless you're just into raw carrots and that's your thing, sure. But that could be, have been done a lot better. Now to finish off here in Canada, the maple whiskey cake. Let's get into it. I'll be honest, I'm not really a chocolate person, but this is actually a really nice dessert. It's kind of warm. It's got a sweetness that's not overpowering, not overbearing. You definitely get that maple flavor, but it's not taking over everything. It mixes really well in with the chocolate. That cream on there was nice to set it all, like give it some, just really to set in some more richness in there, set it all apart. It's a little crispy on the outer edges, which I like. It almost like caramelized on the outside, which is a really nice, beautiful touch there. Added in that texture that it needed. This is overall a nice dessert, really solid. And again, that's coming from someone who doesn't care for chocolate, which is the majority of chocolate cake. The whiskey, you really got to suck on it to really get that flavor in there. But, you know, it is what it is. So, other than that, for a dessert period, that's pretty darn good. Overall, I got to say, this time in Canada was much better than our last time. However, the review that I would give for Canada, or excuse me, for Northern Bloom, is a B minus. Because again, I think the beef tenderloin tips dish drags it down quite a bit. If it was just these two, we'd be closer to the B plus A range. The beef tenderloin tips was almost the most expensive at $7.25, absolutely not worth it. Do not buy that, don't waste your time. The seared scallops, $7.75, overpriced for sure because you only get like two scallops and they're small. The chocolate maple whiskey cake at only $4.50, absolutely buy that 100%. All right, now onto the next stall. All right, we're going, we've got, we got to hit everything. This time we're not playing around, folks. We're going to get every single thing. $6.49, we're in for, for a citrus frosted iced tea at Joffrey's Coffee and Tea Company. One of four drinks that we've got to find. So we're at the one near Canada, following our route here. 
What's in this? This is a tangy blend of frozen lemonade, Minute Maid lemonade, iced tea, and orange tangerine syrup garnished with an orange glazed peel. This is the non-alcoholic version. They did have an option to make it alcoholic. That made it a lot more money, and I'm gonna have plenty of alcohol today, I'm sure, so not worth it for me at this time. 6.49, let's see what we're in for. A couple different notes. It's got a good sweetness level to it. I like the citrus in there. That orange comes out really nicely with the tea. It's really cool. It's really refreshing. It's really nice overall. It's got a good flavor profile. I actually like this. $6.49 for iced tea. Look, that's a little too rich for my blood, though I grew up being used to having sweet tea all the time in the house and then the McDonald's $1 Biggie sweet tea. But hey, <laughs> that's me and my background. For you, this could be good, especially if you're really hot out here. This is not bad at all. Citrus, frosted, iced tea. Overall, because of the price, I gotta go a little bit lower on it, B plus. If the price was right, if this was like three, four dollars, A. Where it is right now, B plus. Now let's move on to our next one. We are at Florelis in France. Here, we got all four of their food dishes and the signature drink. Here we go, we got the signature drink was La Vie en Raw, which is a frozen slush with vodka, Grey Goose, L'Orange, Saint German liqueur, white and red cranberry juice. That came in at $14.50. Oh boy, all right, and then we've got their croissant with goat cheese, herbs, and roasted garlic here. We've got their pulled duck confit with orange sauce and garlic rosemary mashed potatoes. Then we've got their two dessert dishes, which the first one is a warm cake filled with lemon, lavender, and thyme-infused cream served with berry compost. I'm not even gonna try it, that's gâteau à crème citron. That's my best try at that, sorry. And then we got their beignet, a caramelized beignet filled with vanilla cream and glaze and caramel fleur de sel, which is, oh, I don't know exactly what that is. It's like the flaky salt. Although you can't really see the flaky salt. Normally flaky salt you would want to see. Although I believe them, I'm sure that it's there. They wouldn't lie to me, would they? All right, let's start with the drink La Vie en Rose. Last time we were in France, we had a similar type of drink and I thought it was well worth it. Will I agree this time? It's incredibly smooth. It's got a really nice sweetness to it. It's well balanced. You don't even really taste the liqueur in there. Don't taste the vodka. Very nice, very smooth, very subtle on the alcohol, but it's definitely in there. Cool and refreshing. 1450, still steep. However, still well done. Which one would I like better? I'm not sure, but this one is really darn good. So well done, very expensive though but a nice drink overall. All right, croissant, goat cheese, herbs, and roasted garlic. Croissant au fromage. Let's see. Mm. It's a warm croissant. You can rarely go wrong with that. Even if it's a store-bought croissant and you warm it up, pop that bad boy in the microwave, but it's gonna be beautiful, buttery, flaky. Nice and fluffy on the inside, light, beautiful. The goat cheese, not so much that it's overpowering, adds a nice savory herb earthiness to it with, that, with those herbs in there. I like that quite a bit. That is a nice dish. However, for $6.95. Mm. Anyway, we're up. pulled duck. That's our next dish. We're here for the pulled duck. It doesn't look the most appetizing visually. However, it's not always about how something looks. It's about how the taste. Don't judge books by the cover judging by the contents and the chapters within. Pulled duck confit, which means duck cooked in its own fat. Orange sauce, garlic, rosemary, mashed potatoes. Oh, is that what this is supposed to be, mashed potatoes? Okay. Interesting. The duck is overcooked. The potatoes are almost like disintegrated. They can almost not be there. The flavor in general is really subtle and kind of bland. And the texture is just bad all around. I just, that dish is a hard fail, unfortunately, sorry. It sounded good, but just didn't execute well at all. All right, let's move on to the two desserts. The first of which is... Gâteau à crème, citron, which is warm cake filled with lemon, lavender, and thyme-infused cream served with a berry compost. Let's see this. Little dense on the cut there, although this is a fork. Let's get a little bit of everything. Get this over here. Get a little bit of that in there. No, I'm sorry, that one is just not, not great at all. And this rang in right at 
95. Look, let me tell you about this real quick. This, like I said, when I cut into it, it felt dense. It is very dense. This is about as dense as the center of the earth. That is terrible. That is awful. Not good at all uh, texturally. The berry compote, it's not nearly sweet enough. Way too acidic, like they put way too much lemon in there. Not enough sugar, not at all. And we got the thyme infused cream here. Is that what that's supposed to be? That's probably the best part. That's sweet enough, that's nice enough, but it's not so sweet that it brings up everything else. This cake has almost no sweetness into it. A good lemon flavor for sure. So the lemon berry flavoring that you get with the thyme and the lavender, that works. It's not nearly sweet enough and the texture is off. It's way too dense. It should be nice and light and fluffy. There should be something that should be kind of caramelized on the outside or something. They could have done like they could have done like a brulee top, right? Put some sugar on there, brulee the top, that would have given a nice crispness to it. They didn't do that though. They could have done that. I thought that would be really simple, especially for France. Right? You should be able to do a brulee top on pretty much anything you want to, and uh, they did not do that here, and this, so this dish failed. Moving on to the final dish here. This is the beignet, the caramelized beignet. What do we got in here? Vanilla cream glazed with caramel fleur de sal. For $6.50, that's pretty good. It's fluffy, it's airy, it's light. The cream in the center is subtly sweet. It gives you a nice punch of vanilla flavor. You really get this nice brulee top on the outside. It's like this nice caramelized top. It's beautiful. It's got that nice crisp crunch, a little saltiness in it to bring everything together, kind of help add to that flavor, add to that sweetness. It balances everything out. This is pretty good. If you're thinking about beignets in terms of beignets that come from like Louisiana, which has a ton of French influence because it used to be a French territory, these beignets are night and day. The Louisiana beignets are way better. However, this for what this is and for what they're trying to do here, it's fine for what it is. Put your Disney Imagineer cap on and imagine that it's something different than what it's supposed to be. And, you know, uh, you know, it's beignet is fried dough. It's a type of fried dough. That's it. It's pillowy fried dough. And that is what it is, topped with usually powdered sugar. And then it could be other toppings where here we did some different things. And obviously stems from France and has, uh, has tons of French influence in it. This is done fine for what this is. Don't go to Louisiana expecting this. Expect much, much better. If you're going to get anything from France, this and if you got the money add this everything into account collectively my overall review for france is a c minus and that's brought up a lot by these two dishes these dishes collectively the three here the pool duck and the citron cake terrible absolutely awful f's and and really the croissant stands alone the croissant is way overpriced it's a good dish it's just way overpriced for what it is because of the price that's like a d plus all together c minus France! You did better last time. Now that we're done with France, we're on to La Isla Fresca, which is between France and Morocco. And we have got what they have to offer, which is the impossible Jamaican beef patty. That's got a spicy papaya syrup with it. And then we've got the coconut tres leches, which is vanilla cake soaked with oat, almond, coconut milks, and topped with toasted coconut. Got some cream on there as well. And then we got their signature beverage, which is the tropical slush lemonade grapefruit and simple syrup. This is the non-alcoholic version. Again, there's an alcoholic version you could pay a lot more for. However, this is fine for me, for now. All right, we're gonna start with this Jamaican beef patty. It's important to note, this is impossible Jamaican beef patty. It is very plant-based, very vegan and vegetarian friendly, which usually means not a good thing for me personally. However, I'm gonna give it a fair shot the best I possibly can. Now it looks like it's fried really well on the outside, but as I cut into it, I got no crispness into that cut, but doesn't mean that there's not some there. Let's give it a try. All right, first things first, let's be real. The texture, the crust of that Jamaican beef patty is awful. It is extremely dense, very chewy, really hard, really like, that, that, it's not soft and nice, it's not crisp and beautiful, it is dense, ugly, hard to chew, hard to bite through, really working your jaw for that one, not, not good at all. However, I will say the spicy papaya syrup is beautiful, sweet, spicy, great balance there. I really like that. That's really, really nice. The inside, though the Impossible Beef, extremely well seasoned, really, really well seasoned to the point where whatever the actual base flavor of the Impossible Beef is, you can't really taste it. And it's hard to tell that it's not actually beef. However, for me, once you start chewing it and you have to chew a lot of it because that outer crust on that beef patty is terrible and so you got to chew chew through you start getting that not real beef texture that kind of extra chewiness that you wouldn't get if it was actually beef and so that kind of killed it a little bit for me but overall 
Inside flavor, not bad. Outer crust, terrible. Now let's move on to the next one. We got the coconut tres leches, which is their vanilla cake soaked with oat, almond, and coconut milks. And it's got topped with toasted coconut and the cream here. Let's get into it, get a bite with everything all together. This is a plant-based dish as well. And I gotta say, it's pretty nice, right? All that, like it has a nice soaked bottom. It's got a good sweetness to it where it's not overly sweet. That coconut flavor actually comes out pretty subtly. It doesn't take over at all. The toasted coconut adds a bit of a textural difference and a contrast there. A little bit of a crunch, not maybe as much as I personally would want, but enough there, the cream is good. It makes for a pretty good bite. That's a pretty good dessert overall. Like that's a nice bite. I could definitely see that. And for a plant-based person, this is definitely for you. Oh, only $5 for that? That's a pretty good dessert, period. The Jamaican beef patty, that rang in at $6.50, skip that. Even if you're a plant-based vegan person, skip that. That is not good at all. Now, the tropical slush. Terrible. Like, that's actually absolutely awful. Like it's really strong on the grapefruit side. Like immediately I just got like a mouthful of grapefruit and no syrup in there. Like it's supposed to have simple syrup in there. It's got like maybe a teaspoon of it or something. That's terrible. It's not sweet at all. It is just like a mouthful of grapefruit overpowers anything else that might be in there. Grapefruit and ice, not my idea of a good time, but if that's for you, do you. Not for me. That's absolutely horrible. F. Overall, D plus. And that's mostly on this cake. And now on to the next stops. And we arrived at our next stop, Tangerine Cafe Flavors of the Medina in Morocco. And we got what they had for the Flower and Garden Food Festival menu. We have their Mediterranean flatbread, which has tremula, roasted vegetables, artichoke, olives, and feta cheese. And then we also have their dessert, the orange blossom saffron cake. And to bring it all together, we got their signature drink, the pomegranate mimosa. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start with this flatbread first. Fresh out the oven, tons of things on it. Roasted vegetables, olives, chamula. There we go. Overall, the flavor profile, the flatbread itself is really good. All the roasted vegetables come together. There's some really good things on there. You get that feta cheese, gives you a little bit of punch of saltiness, some richness in there. The sauce on there is pretty good. It's like a garlic sauce. You have the herbs in there. Everything kind of sings really nicely. It's got enough salt in there, well seasoned. However, the part that takes it down multiple notches is the crust of the flatbread itself. The dough, it's way overdone and it is just dense and chewy. It is not crisp, it is not flaky at all, it is not an easy bite, it's really hard to chew through. That brings it down, but overall the flavors are really nice there and I actually like, quite like that. Moving on, we got the orange blossom saffron cake. You can see that we got some pistachios there on the side. I'm sorry, I just can't get behind that. When you bite into it, it just tastes like you're eating textured perfume. It is very floral, way too aromatic, and it's got a punch of sweetness that is not pleasant at all, no subtleties to it. It is just like in your mouth, overwhelming with that floral, ugh. Like way too much, way too heavy on the saffron. It just takes everything over in your entire mouth. It is not good at all and the pistachios they use for this taste stale. If these were like really well salted pistachios and they were nice and crunchy and roasted, that would help this out a lot, but that is not good at all. Let's finish it out with a nice pomegranate mimosa. See what we got here. We got some little pomegranate arrows in there, the seeds. Mm. This is awful too. This is super bitter, super tart a very low pomegranate favor. It's, mo it's mostly like Prosecco or whatever the type of sparkling wine that they used in this, but let's call it Prosecco for purposes of this. Whatever type of champagne, it is not good. It is really tart, really bland, no contrast, no sweetness, no softness. It's just like hard, hard on the palate, really harsh, not good. And this is $11 for this skinny flute and 50 cent. Ugh. Skip out on this, skip out on the cake. Get the flatbread if you haven't chewed a lot that day, otherwise it'll overwork your jaw. Overall, Tangerine Cafe, the, the flavors of the Medina in Morocco, this stall gets the review of a D. All right, we're done here in Morocco, now on to something better, I hope. 
we made it to our next stop, which is in Japan, Hanami, at the Flower and Garden Festival 2024. We have their frushi, which is strawberry, pineapple, lychee wrapped in coconut rice and pink soy wrap, served with whipped cream, drizzled raspberry sauce, and toasted coconut. We also got their steam bun, which is filled with vegetables and plant-based soy meat. And then their ramen cup, which is a ramen salad shaken in a cup with fresh vegetables, grilled chicken, dashi broth with chili oil and yuzu. And then to top it all off, we've got their signature drink, the Ichigo Breeze Cocktail. Let's get reviewing. So I'm gonna go ahead in with the Frushi. Kick things off with that as that's first on the list. Let's see what we've got here. We're gonna get some of this raspberry sauce drizzle, a little bit of that whipped cream. Ladies, gentlemen, all in between and everything around. And that is one of the weirdest things I have ever put in my mouth. Make no mistake, it is fruit sushi and there's still rice in there, regular sushi rice in there as if it was natural sushi. Don't think the rice went well with anything. I mean, the, the sweetness from the raspberry drizzle definitely helped bring everything up because it wasn't the ripest of fruits. I mean, fruit and whipped cream, sweet raspberry, that's hard to miss on. However, the rice, the wrap, ugh, I don't think that went well together at all. That is not something that I would ever get again maybe once in your life to enjoy, try it and see what you think about it because it could be for you but for me that is a hard pass all right so next thing we got is the steam bun all right our last experience with a steam bun in japan was not great during the food and wine festival however this is the flower and garden festival and we are going to give them their own fair shake this is filled with vegetables and plant-based soy meat let's see if it's better now that we're in well, close to the springtime. I gotta give it to them. Somehow they managed to make a terrible dish even worse. I mean, that's just disgusting from top to bottom. It is extremely tacky, so sticky. Like there's no, the bun is not soft at all. It's just sticky goop. It's like eating Elmer's glue. The inside, extremely sweet terrible texture I, I mean it just tastes horrible in the mouth like the feel everything about that was like bad it just like contrasted wrongly with everything in my mouth it's like what is in there it's just like foreign objects assaulting my taste buds it was not good at all whatsoever that is a pure 100 percent kwame b certified f no matter what you do no matter what you say that is an f no one and i mean no one in their right mind can enjoy something like this it is an absolute abomination i'd rather eat this paper moving on we got the ramen in a cup now i was advised to shake this up feel like a bartender all right cool let's go shaken not stirred that's how we like our ramen in a cup ramen cup now i'm used to ramen cups being like 99 cent this ramen cup was 8.50 we're gonna see what this is all about. Now they didn't have chopsticks available, so we we're using what they gave us, which is a fork. Folks, that's just sad. And they should be well ashamed of themselves for serving this for $8.50. I have had far better ramen for 99 cent or if you want to get really fancy with it, a dollar fifty cent, a dollar seventy-five cent. Sometimes you can spend two fifty if you want to go to one of the Asian markets and get a nicer one. This was terrible, and this is a disgrace for eight fifty for this little three-portion, three-bite cup. I mean, there's some legitimate ramen places here in Orlando. I would, if you're into ramen, skip whatever this is. Go to there. Go to one of those places. There's some great restaurants around, right? Off the top of my head, where there's 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 Domu, there's Genia, there's all all types of places that are really good for ramen, right? Ramen Takagi. Go for legit ramen, those places, Susuru, all those things. Here, this is an absolute disgrace. For $8.50, for $8.50 cup ramen, the legitimate cup ramen is far better than this garbage. This, D minus. Let's round it all out. This is their signature drink, their cocktail, the Ichigo Breeze Cocktail. 775 for this small cocktail better be packed with flavor. Sake with strawberry 
and watermelon. I gotta be honest with you guys, this is fantastic. It is lovely. It is nicely sweet, super smooth, refreshing, balanced. You can't even taste any alcohol in it at all. This is a dangerous drink. Now, the only problem I have with it, it's their 775. This is extremely small. However, the flavor in here is on point. It is almost magical. Like this makes up almost for everything else. Unfortunately, this place overall is still a D minus because everything else was so bad. However, this drink itself is a B plus. If the price was right, it would easily be an A. You got money to spend, money to blow, a couple of these, watch it go. Overall though, Hanami at Japan for the International Flower and Garden Festival, absolutely all day without a doubt in my mind is a D minus. Avoid this stall except for the Ichigo Breeze cocktail at all costs. We finished up here at Hanami in Japan, now we are on to our next stop. All right, we got the funnel cake here from the American Adventure, and it's got powdered sugar, vanilla ice cream, strawberries, whipped cream, strawberry glaze, and strawberry crunch. We are strawberried out here for strawberry season. Try and get everything all together in one. Here we go. You ready? I like the exterior. I like that it's crisp. I like the strawberries bringing out that sweetness. It definitely tastes kind of like a springtime type thing. The vanilla ice cream definitely cool, mellows everything out brings it together. The whipped cream on there is good. The strawberry crunch, I couldn't really tell it was there, but the crispness from the exterior of the funnel cake gave that contrast, that texture contrast that was definitely needed. Let me factor in the price. The price, $12 for this funnel cake. I'm used to a funnel cake for maybe, and I know it's 2024 now, but six, seven, eight dollars max, I think for a funnel cake that I paid the last time and it was really, really good. Not here, but you know, elsewhere outside. This is a C plus. All right, and now let's get food from the Magnolia Terrace. We have the smoofaletta panini, which has got ham, salami, mortadella, provolone, Swiss, and an olive salad on the side. We also have the spicy chicken gumbo with andouille sausage and long grain and wild rice. And then we've got banana foster bread pudding. And then to circle it all around, we have the bayou cocktail that has spiced rum, coconut rum, fruit punch, and orange juice. Starting with the muffaletta panini. Press, but not as warm as you might think. You can already tell it has been sitting for a while. The cheese is recongealed not going to be melty and pull apart like you might want it to be. However, let's see what it's like. Honestly, that's not a bad bite. The toasted bread is good. It adds that great crunch, that textural contrast that you need. You know, you want the cheese to be more melted. It would be better if this was fresher. However, it's not bad. That's a little lush and richness in there. The, the cured meats have a nice saltiness to them. That great flavor comes out of there. That comes together really nicely. And then the olive salad provides a great amount of acidity in there. Really cuts through all the richness and the fat there. Makes everything come together. For something like for a sandwich, you usually want a sauce, but the bread's not overly dry. It's got a decent moisture to it and it's nice and toasted so it's easy to bite through. I mean, that's, that's a pretty good sandwich. It's not, again, amazing. It's not like standout, but not bad at all. All right, another dish for 650. We're moving on to the spicy chicken gumbo. And Dewey sausage, spicy chicken long grain and wild rice. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a spice guy. That's actually pretty spicy. Like if you don't have a good spice tolerance, you definitely don't want that. Like that is a lot of heat, not just on the back end, on the front end. Like that is very spicy for a dish you would expect from here. It's got a lot of kick to it, helps kick up all the flavors. So I like that personally. For a lot of people, that's gonna be way too much heat on your tongue at one time if you're not into spice. So really be careful with that dish because it is quite spicy. Now the rice to me itself, undercooked, a little hard. It's a little bit salty in places overall as a dish, but it's got a depth of flavor. It's got an earthiness. It's got that deep richness that you would want from a gumbo. However, it just doesn't have enough spices and enough seasoning. Like it's got a lot of like cayenne or whatever that is giving it that spice kick. However, it doesn't have that balance of seasoning that you would want from a great gumbo to give you some really depth, that, that higher depth of flavor. Like gumbo, when you have that nice roux that you spend a lot of time building, you put all those nice vegetables in there, really well seasoned, some of those Creole seasonings in there. I'm not really getting that from this, but overall it's not bad. It's just very, very spicy for what it is. And for most people, I would think that would be overwhelming. But for me, it's nice. Yeah, I feel like some of the only seasonings they use in this is like salt, garlic, and cayenne pepper. However, the meats in here, the andouille sausage, the chicken, they are way overcooked. It's so dry. 
and that really drags it down. Like, yeah, the gumbo's there to try to moisten it up, but you don't want those meats to be dry when you're having a gumbo. You want them to be tender and succulent and juicy and to really melt in your mouth and to really have a great bite and a great texture to it. You don't want them to be grainy and fight against everything that you're having. And that's exactly what it does here. So that kind of brings this dish down. Again, with the, also with the rice being undercooked, chalky, a little bit hard and brittle in some areas, that's not what you want from that either. All right, moving on to the dessert here. We got the bananas, foster, and bread pudding. Let's get into it. We got that caramelized banana, that caramel bananas foster sauce in here. That is really good. I mean, it is nice and sweet. It's got that caramel-like flavor in there. It is rich. It's got all the right flavors coming out. It's got that nice, subtle, that banana flavor. And then you get the bananas. The bananas here are well done. A lot of times when I have a banana foster's dish, I find that the bananas are overcooked. They're mushy. You get no textural difference in there. These bananas are still feeling like they're nice, not overly ripe, but get that nice, like that slight textural bite. They got that firmness to them that gives you a decent bite into the banana. Not mushy at all. A good enough sweetness into it that it all comes together. I mean, this that's a really good. I would say they're slightly more green than yellow bananas, if I were to guess because they're, they're quite a bit firm and not super sweet and rich, but that's really good. The sauce is good all together. The bread, the bread pudding itself, I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, if it was served really warm, it would be magical and some ice cream there with this, whoo, that would be a dish. But however, how it is right now, that's really strong. Like this is out of the three dishes that are from here. This is really, really good. Now only 475, this is a dessert I highly recommend you try. This is pretty darn good. Now for an Olipop break. Olipop doesn't pay me any money. I hope one day they do. I'm just a big fan of them. Like nine grams of dietary fiber per can. I had only 35 grams of sugar, right? When you're eating all this stuff like I'm eating, this is a ton of stuff on you. You got to process it out. And to be able to drink something that tastes good, like the classic root beer Olipop, to help push all that out through your system. Like I, I'm not gonna suffer today. I am not gonna suffer today or tomorrow morning. I'm gonna make sure all this exits out my system really nicely. Cause I'm gonna have probably four of these before the end of the day. And I'm gonna get more than enough of the fiber that I need. I assure, I, I encourage you to do the same. It don't have to be Olipop. Although this is an easy way to get it. It's only 35 calories, really easy to drink. Really nice, but you know, do you. For me it's Olipop, four of these. Now let's finish off our time here at Magnolia Terrace here at the American Adventure with their Bayou Cocktail Spiced Rum, Coconut Rum, Fruit Punch, and Orange Juice. We've got the orange slice on top, and we've got their nice cherries. Let's get into it. I did not expect for this to be the letdown of the bunch. This is, for a drink, really bland. Like, it, it has no distinct flavor at all whatsoever. Like, there's an essence of fruit, an essence of orange, other than that, I don't even taste like the rum particularly. It's like flavored water, which for a drink is a bit dangerous, but it's not really enjoyable past that. Like I far prefer my Olipop. I would put a little rum into this and that'd be a much better drink and better for you than whatever this concoction is. I, I'm just not a fan of that. Um, that's not excellent to me, but I like these cherries. For 12.50, pass, absolute pass. My official review, for Magnolia Terrace here at the American Adventure is a C plus. However, the banana foster bread pudding is an A minus. Hi, thank you so much. I'm, uh, off the top of my head, I'm gonna assume this one has maybe pineapple. All right, let's see if I enjoyed this one as much as the citrus one. This is tropical. We got a Hawaiian syrup in this one. We got a glazed orange peel here. Let's get reviewing. Marginally different, equally as delicious, well-balanced, nice sweetness, pretty good in there. I still feel more citrus rather than tropical, so because of the mismarketing, I'm gonna give this one a B as opposed to the other one being a B plus for being spot on for what it was. However, that's just me being like a little bit ticked that I have to buy the same thing, just slightly different. 649, again, if that's you, have it. Did I give the last one a B plus? I feel like I gave the last one a B plus. Whatever the last one was, a grade down. I feel like it was a B plus, so this is a B. I'm <laughs> still a little ticked about this being pretty much the same exact drink, just a slightly different flavored syrup. All right, we're here at the Primavera Kitchen in Italy. Our next stop at the International Flower and Wine Garden Festival as we eat everything. We got all four of their dishes. We've got the 
Pocchini, we got the Arrabbiata, we got the Quattro Formaggio, we got the Chocolate Cannoli. We're gonna start with the Pocchini. This is mozzarella, grape tomatoes, and pesto sauce. All right, the dish tastes really fresh. The tomatoes are nice and ripe, bursting with juice. The pesto tastes nice and fresh, really good. It is begging for salt though. Like it is very bland other than that. It's like got the nice herbal flavors, but it needs salt. It really does need salt. It's like there's zero in there. And if there was any, it would be so much better. But unfortunately it's not, so it falls quite short. Cute little flower pot serving dish though. That's interesting. Oh, back that up. I didn't even look at the price for a second. This is $7.50. Avoid at all costs. I don't care about the cute little flower pot dish. That is $7.50 for that little portion. I know it's just a little appetizer and it's got the cheese, like the mozzarella, and it looks like fresh mozzarella, but like, come on. $7.50 for like three bites. Next, we're going on to the Arabiata. This is penne pasta, spicy, oh, penne pasta, so small penne pasta. Spicy tomato sauce and buttery shrimp. Let's get into it. This $9.25 for this portion. And I see more penne than sauce. And I can count the shrimp. One, two, three, four, five, six tiny shrimp. All right, let's get the bite. All right, I'm gonna tell you, I'm actually a little bit surprised by this dish. The pasta is cooked nice and al dente. It's got a great little bite to it. It's really nice to eat. The spicy tomato sauce has a lot of flavor, great herbalness to it. A great herb, excuse me, great herbiness to it. That kick from the spice that's in there, that uplifts everything. It's not overly acidic, even though it's tomato based. That's actually quite nice. And then the shrimp. It is like it says, it's buttery, it's salty, it's nice, it adds flavor to everything, and it's not overcooked. At least the two shrimp that I ate, they're nice and succulent and juicy, and especially being mini shrimp, those are really easy to overcook. And again, they're not perfectly cooked here, a tad over, I would say, but this, I mean, again, for what it is, it's actually enjoyable. Now, for $9.25, I really can't get behind that, and I can't recommend that, but if you're really into pasta, I'm just gonna go out and say that this is the one you would wanna try from here. If you got the coin to spend, it is a lot. I don't recommend it. It's not blowing me away, but it's decent. Now we're here to the Quattro Formaggi, which is pinet pasta and four cheese sauce. Let's get into it. Flavorless, nothing in there. A terrible texture, the cream is like congealed. Extremely hard pass, that is, that is awful. And how much was that? 675 absolute pass on that that is just oh no that's terrible all right let's round this up with a chocolate cannoli we got a chocolate covered cannoli shell here with peanut butter ricotta filling this is a suspect looking cannoli however it's not always about how it looks it is about how it tastes it's just not great it's like a really hard bite i would prefer something to be a little bit flakier a nice crispness to it but just an easier bite I, like, I'm not a peanut butter person. I do kind of like the peanut butter ricotta feeling. I get, think it gives a good contrast. It's almost like a, Reese, a, like a Reese's cannoli, which is really different, really interesting. However, at the end of the day, it's just not for me. It's got a good enough sweetness to it. But when we're talking about paying $5.75 for this tiny miniature cannoli, save your money. There's far better desserts that we've had on this. Get one of those. This, this is just not it. By far my favorite dish was the arrabbiata pasta with the spicy tomato sauce, the buttery shrimp. That was quite good, although way overpriced. I can only give it a C plus at best. My overall rating for it is a D. It is overpriced and it way under delivered. We're here at Bauern Market, Farmer's Market here in Germany. And we've got all the food and the Apfel Schumwein signature drink. We are going to start with the potato pancakes with house-made applesauce. This is a vegan, plant-based, vegetarian-friendly meal. Let's get into it. Now from the looks, it looks like it's been sitting there a while. It doesn't look the freshest. Applesauce looks kind of spread thin. However, we'll see. Not the best dish of the day, but honestly, it's not bad. It's, it's actually pretty decent, well-seasoned. It's a little overly salted. You definitely get some garlic and onion in there as well. And the applesauce, because it's super salty, is a great contrast because the applesauce is pretty sweet. So that really helps it out and helps balance it. And you get a little crisp on the outside. And the potatoes have a decent crunch to it and a nice tenderness balance as well. 
and they would have pulled back on the salt. Just a, like, not that, that much. If they use like a fourth less of what they use, this would be pretty, really good. But because of that, it's a little overly salty and a little overwhelming, but when you get that bite of applesauce with it, it's a pretty nice medley there. Still overly salty though. All right, moving on to our toasted pretzel bread topped with black forest ham and melted cheese. Let's get into it. Super dense and really salty from the Swiss cheese and the ham. I need some of the Abdel Shump wine. Full stop, friends. What in the world did they put rosemary in here? It is way overpowering this thing. Like I took a sip of that expecting like apple refreshness to be cool, to kind of wash that down. The rosemary was all I got, it was so overpowering. Oh my goodness, it's like taking a bite out of a garden. A garden full of herbs. Why they put rosemary in here, I don't know. This might have been okay. The rosemary ruined it. Last, hopefully not least, warm tree strudel with mixed berries. Well, it's not warm, not very good either. This is ticking me off here in Germany. This is twice we've been in this area and it's been terrible from one festival to the other. Like, just cut it out. This is so dense. It's something that's supposed to be nice and flaky. It's supposed to be warm. The berries on here, they're so tart. And this is the season. This is mostly strawberries and blackberries in here and raspberries. This is berry season. To have them be this bad, this tart, this sour on here, and nothing to contrast. There's like, no, the, the cheese filling is not super sweet. There's not like enough sugar on, like there's powdered sugar on here, but not enough to counteract how tart it is. It's very sour, it's very unpleasant. It is way more dense than it should be. That's not good at all. Over, overall, like th this drink is an F. Abdel Shumwein, and I was so excited for this. I learned the pronunciation over there. I practiced it all the way over to walk to this table. Abdel Shumwein, Abdel Shumwein. Ab like I cursed myself, it's like saying Beetlejuice three times. It sucks. This is terrible. A certain, and remember that this was in here. This is a certified F all day long. Another F. Seriously, this is why. Why do this? And if you're gonna toast something, why toast it like three hours beforehand? Like toast it close to order or else you're missing the point. Abomination, this is like a D, D minus, terrible. I give this a solid C because there's a good effort here. And again, if it wasn't so salty, I could see us moving up into the B range. Overall though, this is overwhelmingly an F for the farmer's market here at Germany. And now on to our next stop. Okay, we are here at the Refreshment Outpost hosted by Coca-Cola in the Africa area. We got all three of the main items. We've got the seasonal fruit parfait with sweet chili sauce and mango dole whip. We've got the tangerine soft serve in the form of the ice cream float with Barks red cream soda. And we've also got their signature lavender martini. It has Boyd and Blair potato vodka and lavender and lemon. Let's see, all right, we're gonna start with the tangerine soft serve ice cream float. Honestly, the tangerine soft serve, it's nice and smooth. It doesn't, it's like <clears throat> whipped nicely. It doesn't leave a whole bunch of milk fat tackiness on your tongue. It just goes down nice and easy. The cream, the red cream soda, right? it's a nice little touch to it. Just, I mean, I think it all just goes together real nicely. Like I really honestly don't notice the red cream soda that much. It just kind of helps melt it a bit, which makes this a little easier to eat. I, I just think it's a fine little dessert. What it cost me? $6.75. You know, if you're here on a really hot day and you're really hot and you want something cool that you can walk and eat with a spoon, I think this would be fine. I like it, I'm fine with it. I'm not really into fruity ice creams, but this is pretty good. So that's not bad at all. All right, let's move on to the big one, the seasonal fruit parfait, which we got a stamp for. This has got that sweet chili sauce in it. This is the mango dole whip. Let's get into it. Really simply put, this one does way too much for me. There's too much contrast in there, too many things competing. You got the mango dole whip, which is like an entity of its own. You got this, this chili sauce, which is trying to be like kind of like a mango nada with it, with like the tahini and chamoy, and it's, but it's like fighting against it. And then you got these like hard bits of fruit in there, which is the, actually the part of the fruit parfait. And it's just like, really none of it is like going together. You would think it would be like a nice melody where you get like this cool soft dole whip, 
melding through with that chili sauce, give it a little heat, a little kick, and then you get the contrast from the burst of the fruit to give that textural flavor. But it's just really harsh against one another. It doesn't sing together at all. It's really not a pleasant bite at all. Separately, it's okay, and you kind of got to eat it like that, in my opinion, to get the best of it. Yeah, separately, everything's okay, but all together, not good, in my opinion. Finishing out, we got the lavender martini, the signature drink here. Let's give it a try. And they got some lavender in there. Let's hope it did not do to this what the rosemary did to the apple schumbein back in Germany. Oh, ah! Oh, my gosh! Oh! Oh my goodness, I need like a Mary Poppins, a spoonful of sugar to help the medicine go down here. This is, oh, that was worse than the Atville Schoenbein. Oh my God. By far the worst thing I've had here today. By far the worst thing I've had here today. Maybe the worst thing I've ever had here at Epcot. Oh my God, that is like, there, there's nothing good about that. Zero redemption, like no, nothing, nothing positive. I have nothing good to say about it. It is overwhelmingly perfume, bitter, sour, nasty, like just, oh, it tastes like, just the, like, the, like, tastes like Robitussin or something. It's terrible, like just like terrible cough medicine. Like, why would you do that? In $12? Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. F minus. That is so bad. The tangerine soft serve or the tangerine float, whatever you fancy. Go ahead and get that. I would skip out on the seasonal fruit parfait unless you need to get your stamp from here. Then do it and get the stamp. Eat it separately in parts and pieces as you go down the line. But overall, the refreshment outpost, it is an F. All right, right now it's about 6.30. The sun's setting all the way down and we are headed to the next outpost, which is going to be in China. We are here at the Lotus House in China, our next stop. And we've got the, everything the menu had to offer here. We've got the spicy mala chicken skewer with creamy peanut sauce. We've got their house-made cheesy crab wontons. And we also have the pan-fried vegetable dumplings along with their signature drink, the mango bubble tea, non-alcoholic. Let's get into it. Chicken skewer up first. Right. Guys, that's just bad. It's slightly spicy. It just has this really harsh, sour taste to it. It's like not good at all. There's a subtle peanut flavor into it, but it's just way overpowered by this harsh, overly savory taste, almost like it's a little bit burnt. A little overcooked, not juicy and succulent like you would like. That's not good at all. We're rolling, we're moving on to the house-made cheesy crab wontons. I mean, it's a crab wonton with a sweet sauce on it. You really can't go too wrong with that crispy on the outside. Not as crispy as it could be because it's been sitting under a heat lamp for a really long time. It's got a sweetness to it. It needs more of that sauce because the cheese is really, really, really acidic and sour. And so it could use a little bit more of that sweetness to bring it together. But in general, it's a decent crab wonton. It's all right. Not the best one I've ever had, not the worst, but it's fine. It's just middle of the road. Round it out. Let's go to the pan fried vegetable dumplings. Two of these little things for $5.50 really small for 550 steamed and then let sit for a while and it like hardened on the outside let's get it the texture of the dumpling is horrible you know nice pan fried dumpling supposed to have a decent crisp to it that one doesn't have it at all it's like it's like steamed and then let sit for a while and it like hardened on the outside the sauce on it is way too sour it really brings everything down it kind of makes you pucker it's like not it's not complimenting at all it's not balanced at all there's not enough sweetness to add to it or not enough saltiness in there to kind of bring it all together. It's just really sour and acidic. I don't really care for that at all personally and I would avoid that greatly. Now let's move on to the mango bubble tea. The tea itself is refreshing. It's nice, it's got a decent mango flavor in there. It's not overly sweet, it's refreshing. Not like the tea drink, the frozen tea drinks that we've had at the Joffrey stands. Those are much better than what this is, however, what I have to criti critique this on heavily is the boba in here is terrible. It is absolutely terrible. It's like, you know, I know it's made with tapioca flour. It's supposed to be tacky and chewy a little bit, but it is like gum chewy. It is really bad and it's extremely bland. It doesn't add any sweetness to it or anything like that. It's just there to be there and it really should not be there. So I got to tell you, I got to be honest. I got to give you the truth. Overall, for the Lotus House here in China, a D minus. 
All right, we are here at our next stop, the Jardín de Fiestas, and we've got all their food items. We've got the sope de chilario, we've got the tamale de rajas, and then we've got the flan de guayaba. Let us start with the sope de chilario. This has got guajillo pepper braised pork on a fried corn shell with black beans. It's got shredded cabbage, crema mexicana, queso fresco, and chives. Let's just dig into it. Hope we get a nice crisp bite, a lot of great flavors in there. Well, I'll tell you this, it's not nearly as crisp as you would want it to be. Looks like the, the sope de chel has been sitting there for a while. However, there's decent flavors in the pork. It's a little dried out, especially for something that was braised. You would think it would be a lot more tender and juicy. It's seasoned. It's got those Mex that Mexican flair and those spices. It's got that heat that picks everything up. It's just overall, it just doesn't come together as well as you might think it will. It's just You're not crispy enough with the shell. You're not tender and succulent enough with the meat. And the black beans personally add too much of a depth of earthiness to it. I know that's traditional for sopes, however. Anyway, look, not the best one at all, not the worst one by far. I think some tweaks, this could be a lot better. However, I'd probably avoid this on my trip here. All right, now we're gonna move on to the tamale de rajas. We've got poblano peppers, corn and cheese and masa topped with poblano cream, crema mexicana, pickled carrots, and onions with chives. All right, it's not good. And I'm gonna preface this by saying tamale is not my favorite thing in general. I'm not a big fan of them. It's so mushy, and this wasn't served warm at all, but it's so mushy. It just takes like any of the other flavors that are there, even the pickled veggies, which I quite liked. It's just way overpowered everything. It's just one mushy, like just corn bland flavor. I, like, there's nothing that can come from it. It just wasn't good at all. Texturally, flavor-wise, nothing worked there at all. Let's finish out the Jardín de Fiestas with the flan de guava. We got vanilla flan with guava coulis, whipped cream, and fresh fruit. Let's get it all in one bite here. Got blackberry, whipped cream, flan, the guava coulis. If you love or like guava a lot, I think you'll really, really enjoy this dessert because the flan is nice, silky, lush. It's got a good sweetness to it. The berries were good. The whipped cream is fine. And then the guava coulis is nice and sweet and brings that up, but you really gotta like guava. I'm personally not a big person on guava, not a big guava fan. The flavor of it in general doesn't usually sit well with me. However, I can tell you, if you do like it, you would love this dessert. Overall, my flan, the flan, my favorite thing on the menu at Jardín de Fiestas, I would give the flan itself, even though I don't like guava, I would give the flan a B minus. Everything else all together, D plus is what I would give the Jardín de Fiestas. All right, we got the third of the four teas. This one is the iced berry chai latte from the world, from the Joffrey's at the World Showcase near Disney Traders. This one's got a berry sweet blend of chai tea, blueberry syrup, and milk, skim milk particularly, topped with whipped cream and cinnamon. It's non-alcoholic. Again, you can get an alcoholic version if you want to pay the additional monies. I did not, so this is what I got. Let's get into it. This one I'm not a fan of, right? The chai base is fine, it's good, and it's got that nice chai flavor, it's got that sweetness to it, it's got those spices that are coming out of it, the blueberry syrup in this absolutely ruins it. It's like cough syrup tasting, and it makes it taste like medicine. This does not work as it stands at all. The blueberry syrup is just so harsh against everything else. Not good at all. This one, $6.49 for this, D+. We are here. We got everything from trowel and trellis right here near Disney Traders. We're gonna start here with the impossible meatballs, which have a lentil bread, spinach, marinated vegetables, and creamy herb aioli. Let me start by saying there's some good flavors in here. Nice seasonings, nice herbs, it all comes out. Very flavorful and impactful. However, this dish, very salty. There's so much salt in there. In a dish, like this to bring all those spices and herbs to life. However, they went way overboard with they, what they needed. And then the lentil bread, the wrap that comes over this, it is so coarse. It is a terrible bite. And it just like, just breaks apart in your mouth, becomes really grainy, not good at all whatsoever. This had potential to be really good, but unfortunately falls very, very flat. Now we've got the soy glaze sticky rib. This has green onions and peanuts with it. The soy glaze, of course, and it looks like some jalapenos on there. Look, the ribs are way overcooked. Not succulent, not tender, not fall off the bone at all whatsoever. 
And the soy glaze is overpowering. It's full of way too much sodium, too salty, not nearly enough sugar in there to actually give it the sweetness that you would think from a glaze. It should be a nice, salty, sweet glaze that counteracts and balances out so beautifully and gives this great flavor. It does not do this for this at all. And the rib meat itself has zero flavor into it, no smokiness, nothing. It's really bland and again, just overcooked and dry. Not good at all whatsoever. That dish, hard fail. All right, we're gonna round it out with the dessert here. We got the chocolate mousse terrarium. Look how beautiful that is. We got matcha crumble, we got chocolate soil, we got a nice little flower in there. I mean, that looks really cool. All right, ooh, this mousse, really thick and rich, just digging into it with the spoon. A little too whipped, like overly whipped and thick. It's not that lush, silky richness that you would want to or expect to have from that. The matcha crumble just turns into like grainy sand in your mouth doesn't disintegrate well at all it's just there and just leaves and like just ugh, a scathe of film i'm sorry trial and trellis like there was some a big swing but a big miss here there's nothing that i would recommend that you get here this overall is a d minus get your stamp if you need to with the meatball i don't think you'll enjoy any of it though we're here at Florida Fresh in the Odyssey. Now, normally it is in its own stand and we were there. I'm not sure why they're not doing that, but I met someone else from my hometown that explained to me that it's here in the Odyssey building for now. So that's where we are. We've got the grilled warm water lobster tail with key lime butter. We've got the cupanito with mojo marinated pork belly ham, Swiss cheese pickles, and stone ground mustard sauce. We've also got their Florida strawberry shortcake and their cucumber watermelon slushy. Let's get into it. We're gonna start with the lobster tail. Got that grilled lemon, give it a squeeze that citrus, that acidity. The lobster tail should be succulent, nice and buttery, juicy. Oh, it's already hard to come out of here. Feels like it could be a little rubbery and overdone. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that lobster is way overcooked. It's like rubber. 11.25 for that. I cannot justify anyone paying that at all. It's got the flavor in there, but it is not a great consistency at all. They just way overcooked that lobster. All right, let's move on to the Cubanito. $6.50 for that, that is crazy. Like, this better be a flavor bomb in my mouth, like just insanely good, let's see. And that is like all over the place. It's muddled, the flavors don't shine, you don't get any of the, 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 the beauty of the cured meats isn't shining. And the pickles don't provide enough acidity, enough pop in there, nor enough crunch. The bread on the outside, it's just comes, it's like really chalky to me. Like even like, it's not compared to the sandwich we had earlier, the mufaleta, where that was nice, a succinct bite. This one just kind of breaks apart in your mouth and disintegrates into a crumbly texture, which is not good at all. And then some of the cured meats here are really dry. Really, really weird. It just does not work well at all whatsoever. It's like it's been sitting for a long time and just under the sun drying out. Not good. This thing needed some sunscreen, some SPF 50. Moving on. We've got the Florida strawberry shortcake. Let's get into it. Looks like strawberries with a little glaze of syrup on them. Maybe macerated a bit even. I'm not sure. They don't really say what their technique is. We definitely got the whipped cream here. We've got the cake. The strawberries are fine, but that cake is super dense and flavorless. Blend. It's got a terrible aftertaste to it. It's like, it's like really processed, like hydrogenated flavor, like really like, ugh like the worst type of store-bought cake, like a frozen store-bought cake that you won't heat up. And I mean, that's exactly probably what that is. It is absolutely terrible. All right, the cucumber watermelon slush. Let's get into it. That's the best thing by far. It's cool, it's nice and refreshing, and that cucumber watermelon flavor goes together really well. Florida, Orlando gets really, really hot here. This is a really nice, refreshing slush. Not too sweet but not too, like, again, not too not sweet. It's not too subtle with the sweetness is what I'm trying to say. It is a good balance between sweetness. And $5, I mean, it's a little small, but collectively everything else, D minus, this itself, C plus. We're reaching the tail end here. All right, we are here, still in the Odyssey. We have the citrus blossom, which is naturally supposed to be in here. And we got all three of their signature dishes. We've got the orange sesame tempura shrimp, which has an orange chili sauce. We've got the lemon meringue pie with lemon curd, lemon mousse, and toasted meringue. And we've also got their orange lemon smoothie. This is the non-alcoholic version. They also have it in a souvenir cup. In the regular cup, it's only $5. In the souvenir cup, it was like 15. Crazy. Let's get into it, starting with the shrimp.
That's actually not bad. A beautiful crunch on the outside. It's nicely fried, nicely breaded. The chili sauce is nice and sweet. It has a little bit of kick and heat to it, so that gives it, that really brings it up at a lot because the tempura batter, the breading, has essentially not a real big flavor into it at all, not much seasoning in there. But that all comes together. It's like a nice canvas for that sauce. And it's a decent sized portion for the $7. The shrimp isn't overcooked on the inside. It's for $7, that's not too bad. All right, let's move on to the lemon meringue. Here we go. This looks beautiful, doesn't it? It looks amazing. Nicely presented. Let's cut into it. Dang, I ruined it. That's actually pretty good. It's real balanced. It's sweet, it's creamy, it's luscious, it's tart, it's rich, it's lemony and acidic. It all comes together, nothing overpowers the other. Everything complements each other really well. Even the crust is nice and flaky. That's pretty good, only 4.75, I'll take that. That's definitely one I would recommend. Let's move on here to the orange lemon smoothie. So the flavor overall, like I think I'm okay with, but it has this like milkiness to it almost. It's like, that makes it almost like slimy and just throws off the consistency entirely and kind of dulls the flavor in a weird way. That if they didn't have that in there, whatever kind of cream or whatever they're putting in there, if they just took that out, it would be so much better. It is killing this drink where, you know, it could be really good or pretty good and it's just not really that much at all. And this is the lowest thing out of here, but overall, the citrus blossom here at the Odyssey, overall for me, is a B minus. All right, we gotta still hustle up. We only got ooh, 30 minutes to try to finish up everything here. We're gonna have to go quick, quick, quick. We're on to the next one. Let's roll. We're out here at the uh, pineapple promenade near the port of entry. Here we go. We got their spicy hot dog with the pineapple chutney and plantain chips. We've got their frozen dessert violet lemonade, and we've got the frozen limeade Dole Whip, and also a wildflower seeds packet cute, but that's because we got all of our stamps. Now let's get into it because we're running out of time. Here we go, hot dog first. It's spicy, yes. You get some contrast with the texture of the plantain chips being crispy, but there's too much liquid in there from the pineapple chutney and all the sauces. That bun, that hot dog bun is falling apart, can't hold it up, can't hold it together. It's got a lot of acidity in there, a lot of sourness, not enough sweetness to round that out and bring it, bring it about. That was not good to me. All right, moving on from that, we're going to this Violet Dessert Lemonade. Oh yeah, if you're gonna try this hot dog, you need this Violet Dessert Lemonade. This is cool, this is refreshing, highly palatable, nice and sweet and smooth. And you can also get in an alcoholic version, but how it is right now, especially to end round out the night, this is beautiful for me. Now our frozen Dole Wade with lime mango smoothie mix. This is the special treat when you get everything, all the stamps. It's cool, it's refreshing, it's sweet, it's sour, it's acidic. You got that citrus flavor in there from the lime, but that was helped to take all the nasty flavor from that hot dog out. That hot dog is a D minus trending up. These two dishes, this frozen dessert by Lemonade is a B plus. The special treat to me is a B. It can be a little sweeter in my opinion, a little more balanced and rounded out, but overall it's nice and it's cool. Look at the nice cup it comes in. That's really good. I like that. And that'll do it for the pineapple promenade. And now we're on to the next, trying to get everything in before we gotta get out of here. We got brunch cot, avocado toast right here with marinated tomatoes, plant-based cheese crumbles, and on a toasted ciabatta. And then we've got their biscuit and gravy, which is made with impossible chicken fried steak and impossible sausage. We got their fried cinnamon roll bites with cream cheese frosting and candied bacon. Let's get into it. We're gonna start with the avocado toast. Look at that. It is super soft and mushy. I mean, I don't know how long ago they toasted it, but it is not holding up at all. It's like devoid of salt, so you just get a mouthful of bland avocado. And that's not good at all. All right, let's try this impossible biscuits and gravy. Super dense cutting into it. That is not great. Flavor-wise, the gravy itself is okay. 
And it's definitely too salty. Uh, it definitely masks the difference that it's like impossible chicken and impossible sausage in there. However, it's uh, like that once you have to chew through it, and especially with that biscuit being so dense and dry, that biscuit is terrible. And because you have to chew through it, you eventually start to find that the meat is too chewy. And, and for someone who, again, can tell the diff textural difference, you realize that it's impossible meat and not in a great way. And so that dish, again, just kind of falls apart. It does, there's not really great aspects to it at all. I just, no. All right, now we got the fried cinnamon roll bites with cream cheese frosting and candied bacon. Wow, that's actually really present. I would say that's just a nice sweet treat. It's warm, it's flaky, it's soft. It's got that burst of cinnamon on the inside. That warm cream cheese and the candy bacon on top just set it off nice. It's not, it's a tad overly sweet, I'll be honest, but if you look at that as a dessert, that's pretty good. My overall grade for brunch cot is a D minus. The cinnamon bites though, however, are a B plus. All right, now we got the Epcot Farmer's Feast. Here we go, this is at World Discovery near the test track. It's presented by Chevrolet. And then we got their grilled street corn on the cob with the savory garlic spread and plant-based cheese. Then we've got their veal loin that's got a spring pea risotto, which is featuring Ben's original international grains, arborio rice, and red wine syrup. And then we have their strawberry rhubarb upside down cake with scrim fresh whipped cream. That's what we got going on here. Beautiful. All right. And this changes based on the season. Right now we're in what's called early bloom. So this is what the menu is going to be. It's going to change in springtime and then again for summer solstice. All right, the corn. Grilled corn is a really simple dish, but they found a way to mess it up here. I don't know what's in the garlic spread, but it's like really bitter. The, the corn, especially grilled, it doesn't, it doesn't have enough sweetness brought out of it. I don't think it has enough char on it. Maybe it's a little undercooked even. And the plant-based cheese just gives like not a, it's like a, a, a weird nutty flavor. Subtle, but weird and nutty and not necessary. I, I don't like that at all. All right, let's try this veal loin. Now, okay, you can just look at that and see how dry this is. I mean, it's, like, this is sad. Like, this is incredibly dry. I mean, it's, like, hard to pierce the fork through it. This is not good. All right. Bland. Flavorless. Dry. Tasteless. The red wine syrup. I don't know why they call it syrup. It's not sweet at all. It's literally like jerky. That, I mean, that is, that is terrible. That, this is like, this is crazy bad. Let's move on. Round it out. We got the strawberry rhubarb upside down cake. And then we got the creme fraiche whipped cream. This is much better. In comparison to the other two dishes, this definitely works as a dessert. The cake is moist, it's sweet. The strawberry and rhubarb it has this nice contrast of tartness, sourness, and sweetness. A little bit of a little acidity in there. That whipped cream fresh on the side. Subtly sweet, but nice and cool. Just kind of brings everything together. That's a fine dessert. That definitely picks up. But those other two dishes, terrible. Overall, the Epcot Farmer's Feast, D minus. The strawberry rhubarb upside down cake, C plus. Everything else, F. So we're here at the end of our trip. This is the it, this is the end. We are done after this. This is the final spot. We are here at the Connections Eatery and we've got the last two dishes we needed to get on our journey. We have the hot honey chicken sandwich and then we have got their orange liege style waffle. Let's get into it. Oh, the bun's super soggy. The sandwich is no good, folks. The a brioche bun is overly processed. It's like frozen and brought back to life, but it's not like well toasted. It's not buttery. It's not fluffy. The chicken itself, terrible. No flavor in it at all. The breading is not good. It doesn't have that crispness that you would want. It's not juicy and flavorful like you would love a beautiful chicken breast to be on a sandwich like that. I, I, I mean, that's just a poorly constructed sandwich. The hot honey to me doesn't shine through at all. It's like barely on there. Not good. But let's round it out. We got the Orange Bird Liege Waffle. Just because something looks pretty doesn't mean it's good on the inside. And this is one of those cases. That, that waffle is like stale, dehydrated. And Liege waffles are supposed to have a nice chew to it and, 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 and be firm. 
and nice and sweet, that is everything but that. I mean, it, it's just overly processed. It's like stale. That wow. Overall review here, Connections Eatery. We got the hot honey chicken sandwich, the orange bird liege waffle. Um, it's unfortunate we had to end our trip this way. However, this is a certified F. No reason to waste your money in here. 6.83 miles, 14,000 steps. Woo! I do it for the people to give you the real deal. That's going to do it for my review of the International Flower and Garden Festival 2024 here at Disney World, Epcot, and I ate everything. Thanks for coming along with me on this journey. It was a challenge, an adventure, but we got through it and we ate everything from every stall. Let me know what you thought. Have you been here before? Are you planning to go this year? Agree? Disagree? What do you think? Do you want to go because of some of the things that you saw? I would love to know your thoughts. Leave a comment, like this video, and subscribe if you want to see more from us. And let me know what other places you think I could review. Be well, eat wisely, and I will see you next time on Kwame Be Reviewing.